Earlier, we used the conditional cut or fill subassembly to determine when to insert a retaining wall into our corridor. Now let's do the same thing with a sidewalk. Up at the north end of my corridor, as you can see, I have a new subdivision going in. The subdivision has a sidewalk going along the front of the lots, but the sidewalk is broken up by the drives that enter the lots. So in order to keep from showing too much sidewalk, we're going to use the horizontal target conditional subassembly to look out and see if the sidewalk should be there or not. If I isolate the line work, you can see that I have my property lines along with the sidewalk drawn in and the drives. And I was, I had the forethought to go in and lay everything out in layers. So my sidewalk is all on one layer. These are simply polylines, no alignments or feature lines or anything like that. They're just simple 2D polylines at a zero elevation. Now, I've already created this assembly that has these conditional subassemblies attached. And you can see on this very first one, I have a target not found condition. Again, the layout width and grade doesn't matter. It's for visual purposes only. Uh, we're going to look out 9,999 feet, aka the maximum, to see if our target is there or not. And if it's not, we're going to put in a link offset and slope and just grade out to our right-of-way line. Now, if the sidewalk does show, or excuse me, if the target does show, and we're going to look out 200 feet to see if the target exists, then we're going to input a curb and a sidewalk and then our daylight condition like we did in the earlier example. You'll notice that after my horizontal condition, I put in some more subassemblies and then some more conditional subassemblies. And that's the great thing about conditional subassemblies. They can easily be daisy chained to accommodate any number of conditions to check for. I'm going to go to my corridor and rebuild it in Prospector. I'm going to go to the corridor properties and the parameters, and I need to create a new region here. So my initial region is going from the start to the end of the alignment. If I select that region and right click, I can select split region, which will create two regions. And I'll just use my endpoint O snap to snap to that boundary line so I can split my corridor region right there at that line. Now we have our two regions with the stationing already set up. I'm going to select the other assembly that we're going to use. And for this, I'm going to change up the frequency. I'm actually going to make it tighter than it was before, simply because I don't want to miss any geometry when I'm inserting this sidewalk. So I'm going to put some smaller values in here. This is going to take it longer to model, but with the benefit that it's going to be more accurate. Now, on this assembly, I did not go in and perform my housekeeping duties as I did earlier. I do need to reset my surface targets because I inserted the new assembly. And if I come down here and search, let's make this box a little bigger for easier searching. Let's see, I see that I have a conditional horizontal target. Um, on the right, and then on, there's one on the left. No, there's not one on the left. We don't have the subdivision on the left. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to specify my object name. I'm going to click in the box that says none for the target offset. And I'm going to change the object type to target from alignments to feature lines, survey figures, and polylines. Now I can go in and manually select the line work, or I can select it by layer. This is what I was talking about earlier. Civil 3D is smarter than me, and it will only display those layers that display or that actually have polylines, survey figures, or feature lines on them. I'm going to select nearest target, where it says selection choice if multiple targets are found. 
because it actually is going to find two different lines for my sidewalk. I want it to select the nearest one that it comes to. And I've selected it now. I click OK and then OK again. We're going to go through the modeling process. And then we have our newly modeled corridor. And it's very easy to see here where our sidewalk is and where our driveways are. And you'll see, you know, where I did some, some nice little curve fillets there, it's not exactly 100%. Um, I didn't go to quite that much trouble. I would have to really tighten up those frequencies to make that happen. But... When I change my code set style to be a rendered one, it shows up rather well. I can see my sidewalk stopping at the roadway, at the driveway, and uh, everything looks really good there. So that's how we can use our horizontal conditions to change up what we're inserting.